the all-new WMEG Radio. And welcome back to the second half of Business in Motion, a program focusing on business and entrepreneurship from an African-centered perspective. I'm your host, RGL Biz Coach, and I'll tell you, you're in for a treat as we go on through the rest of this segment, which is entitled In the Spotlight. So in the spotlight today, as I mentioned, we have Brother Stephen A. Smith. Now, but before we actually bring him on, uh, because, you know, it's, it's a pretty long excerpt, but I'm not going to run the whole thing. What I want to do is to let you hear about 20 minutes in this particular segment, and we'll take a break and we'll come back, and you'll get the remaining portion or at least a, a large part of it. But a lot of the information he's putting out is right. It is spot on. This is something that you need to hear. I think it's uh, it's just a lot of value. And he, he he's, he's getting his point across with a lot of passion. And, you know, I, I just love it. We have to do something, as I was mentioning before we went off. We've got to do something. We've got to take responsibility ourselves to bring this to a halt. I have even told that in certain cities, like in Los Angeles, there's some of the big uh, gang members out there. And some of those big, large gangs that exist today might have been started by people in the government. You know, these could have been things that they did. And this just fuels. And you just look at it. And you have to realize that you're basically in a... It, it's, it's kind of like a war. The problem is one side knows they're at war and they're developing strategies and executing things to keep the other, you know, on the downbeat. So they just can't get themselves together. But the problem is the side that's on the downbeat doesn't know it. They don't they have no understanding of what's going on and they're continuing to be played. And, you know, it's like uh, perception being so powerful again, not just what others think about our community, but. When you start getting into peer pressure, and one of our biggest problems have to be our brothers, our young brothers, the way that they are being educated from their peers, and if the peers are doing things that they shouldn't be doing, if they're living that dangerous gangster lifestyle, then you know what do you expect? I wish that from the musicians, because the musicians, the entertainers, and all, they play a major role in shaping and forming the psyche of those that are within our community. And they need to take responsibility and understand that what they do, what they say, how they dress, all of those things, that they're going to have tons and tons of people watching them, mimicking them, because they're the ones who seem to be hip. They're the ones who are in the groove or whatever the new lingo is that you might want to call it. They're the ones who happen to be that group of people. And so the younger ones, the ones on the street, you look and that's who you want to mimic. It's no different. When I was young growing up, it just happened to be that the entertainers were different. We had Earth, Wind, and Fire. And, you know, you had the worst case would have been the group Call War, just their name. But they weren't at war. You understand what I'm saying? They were very peaceful people and their music was very good. But I drew from them. I would, I would check them out a lot of times. They're not some of those uniforms they used to wear where they got very, very flashy. But a lot of the attire that singers would wear and they would always you know put their image on an album i would go and try and find okay let me let me see if i can find a suit that looks like that shirt whatever because you you mimic those you look up to those people there's no difference again from the way that it was in my day uh you know growing up and the way that it is today but the way that it is today if you listen to a lot of the music and I tell you, I've had some people, young ones, in, in a car, and they asked me once to play um, th this music for them. And I put it on and had to take it back off because every, they couldn't say, t it wasn't even three words without vulgarity in the music. I mean, it was, and, and what got me was one was very young. It was only about 10, 11 years old. And I'm like, now they're being exposed to this at this early age. What can you expect? What's going to happen? What's going to be the life this person's going to live? But anyway, that's the way that it is. And we're going to bring on Stephen A. right now and just check him out, the passion that he has in trying to convey his point. I'll be back with you. When are we going to do something? I'm tired. I'm, I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences to, to the devastated families that are out there. I'm so tired of the, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm tired of the moments of silence. 
I know the feeling. And so should everybody else right now. Special edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show coming your way right now. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show. Yes, I am still on vacation, but obviously I felt compelled to come off vacation in light of what transpired this week in in Buffalo, Maryland. I'm sorry, in Baltimore, Maryland. I apologize. Um, Before I do anything else, obligations uh, take precedent first and foremost. I'm here in our studio thanks to our official studio sponsor, FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel is the official sports betting company of the Stephen A. Smith Show. Normally, on a day like today, I would be Talking about sports, obviously. I'll be back in studio talking about sports on ESPN and ESPN2 as of this Wednesday, uh, July 5th. I'm coming off vacation. I'll be on the air. I'll be on the air ESPN2 on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then back uh, our original channel ESPN for first take uh, next Monday. But on this particular day, even though I'm on vacation, it's hard to enjoy yourself when you hear the kind of news that we just heard. And I thought it was appropriate to start with Steve Kerr the head coach of the Golden State Warriors, even though he was speaking last year in the immediate aftermath of the shootings that took place, the mass shooting that occurred in Uvalde, Texas. The reality is, is that it's apropos. It's apropos to bring that up now because the level of rage, disgust, exhaustion, and exasperation that he obviously felt last year should be felt by all of us today, especially black America. Now, I'm not gonna sit up there and talk to you about everything that's going on in this country because we understand uh, that black people in this country aren't the only one with issues. There are shootings with white people taking place. There are shootings in the Latino community that are taking place. We understand all of that. Black folks are not the only ones dying. And we certainly have sensitivity to all human life, at least on this show, I can tell you that much. But I'm coming to you today as a black man. Because I alluded to this months ago, and I'm not going to back up from it now. It's an utter disgrace what's happening throughout the streets of America. And for those of you who don't know what happened as of this weekend, let me, you know, articulate what has transpired. Sunday, 1230 a.m., gunfire erupted at an annual neighborhood block party. A block party. Now, there are those of you who will sit up there and say, well, you know what? They were, it wasn't a permit. They were having a block party without a permit. Shut the hell up. That's not the point. The point is that gunfire broke out during a block party. What was supposed to be a celebration ended up in two people dying because of gun violence and 28 people injured. 28. And by the way, um, I believe it was... The fourth shooting this weekend, there was one that occurred in Wichita, Kansas, where nine people were shot. There was one that occurred in Memphis, Tennessee, where four people were shot. And and there was one that occurred in the Bronx, New York, where I was born before being raised in Hollis, Queens, New York City, born in the Bronx, where four other people were shot. It's just one of many incidences that have taken place this year. There is no doubt about that. But we're going to talk about Baltimore, Maryland, just for a second here. We'll hear in a second from Mayor Brandon Brandon Scott, along with Governor Westmore, two African-Americans that are overseeing the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland. But before I even get into that, 28 individuals wounded. 15 of them were minors under the age of 18 years of age. 15. Three victims were 15 years old. One victim was 14 years old. Two were only 13 years of age. This is what's going on in the streets. Of America. And like I said before, there's a lot of stuff going on throughout this country. And the most heinous thing that I could possibly imagine, I think about Uvalde, Texas. I think about Sandy Hook, where little children were executed. Okay? And nothing in life appears more egregious than that. But death is death. Violence is violence. And when the hell are we going to do something? Just like Steve Kerr said, when the hell are we going to do something? Hell with the vacation. How the hell can you smile and sit back and enjoy yourself with bullshit like this happening? This is unbelievable. It doesn't seem to end. And I'm going to tell you something right now. It's incredibly alarming to me. When we think about, I I, I just made sure because I want to make sure 
And just for those of you who will question, where's he getting his information from? How about prisonpolicy.org? How about gunviolencearchive.org? Along with various other websites. They ain't making this stuff up. Now, you might ask, Stephen A., excuse me, we understand you're a black man. We get the level of sensitivity that you may have, but, but, but still in all, death is death. And I understand that. I understand that. But as a black man, I'm going to stop there first. And here is the reason why. The Latino population, the Hispanic population, doesn't appear to be an endangered species. White folks. In the United States of America, despite the fact that their populace has, dis has diminished to below 60%, to 58.9% to be exact, they don't appear to be an endangered species. Black folks are the ones making up 13.6% of the population in the United States of America. By the way, when I talk about the populace, did you know that in the United States of America right now, 38% of the 1.9 million people incarcerated in this country, according to prisonpolicy.org, 38% are white of the 1.9 million. That comes up to 722,000 for those of you who don't have a calculator in front of you. You know what the black prison populace is? 38%. Identical to the white community. The difference is that the 722,000 for the black community is subtracted from the 13.6% of the population in America. Whereas the 722,000 from the white community is of their 58.9% populace. Who's in more trouble? It would happen to be us. When are we going to do something? As Steve Kerr would say, when the hell are we going to do something? I got a whole bunch of numbers here and I made sure to look it up because I didn't want people sitting up there looking like, hey, Stephen A., I mean, what, what does this have to do with anything? I want you to pay attention. I want you to understand this. I'm looking at some of the events, areas where shooting recently occurred. Baltimore, Maryland, Block Party, Hollywood, Florida, Allen, Texas, May 6th, Atlanta, Georgia, May 3rd, Dadeville, Alabama, April 15th. Where four people were killed and 32 were wounded. It's the East Coast. It's the West Coast. It's the South. It's states with strict and stiff gun laws. And it's states with damn near no gun laws. As far as I'm concerned. We can bring up the proliferation, proliferation of guns in this country. Or lack thereof. We can bring it all up. The fact of the matter is, when it comes to black folks, it don't matter, especially with us, because we in a world of trouble. What are we going to do about it? As Steve Kerr would say, when are we going to do something? When are we going to do something? 28 people wounded for a block party. Gunfire breaks out. Two gunmen on the loose. They don't know who they are. They're bloviated about we, gonna, we ain't going to rest until we find them, but we can't find any witnesses that know who the hell did all the shooting. And by the way, in the state of Maryland, I'd like to know what kind of argument can be made when they grade an A- minus on a Giffords gun law scorecard. I mean, states like California and New Jersey have a, a, a grading of A- so they have even stricter gun laws, but Maryland is no slouch in all of this. Maryland has some of the strictest gun laws, according to a uh, uh, scoring an A minus on a Giffords gun law scorecard. Gun purchases require a seven day waiting period and all handguns must be registered with the state police. Maryland also has a ban on assault weapons and large capacity ammunition magazines, as well as a requirement that all purchases of handguns must complete safety training. In addition, individuals must be 21 years or older to purchase or possess firearms and background checks are required for any transfer of ownership. Fine. Why the hell have there been 130 homicides in Baltimore this year? And over 300 shootings. Is that working for you? I don't know what the hell to say. I'm not blaming anybody, meaning the politicians. But I mean, damn. 
when you hear about those strict gun laws and you hear about the fact that they're prioritizing it when your mayor, who is 39 years of age, Brandon Scott, campaigns on making sure to what? Reduce homicides by 15 percent each year in his term. Getting them to below 300 homicides in his first year as mayor. Well, I think it's safe to say it ain't the greatest start in the world. I think that's fair to say. But before I go any further. Let's highlight for a second. From the news in Baltimore, what exactly has transpired? Play that first clip for me, y'all, please. Nikki, in that surveillance video, you can see dozens of people running through the street of that Brooklyn neighborhood. At one point, there are people that are actually ducking behind cars to take cover. Now, police telling us tonight that at least nine victims remain in the hospital. The other victims have since been treated and left. They tell us that 15 of those victims are under the age of 18 years old. Police hammering down that message that they are not going to sleep until they find the person or persons responsible for this. And I do want to warn our viewers that what you are about to see and hear may be very disturbing. An $8,000 reward now on the table to help police track down the killers of these two victims, 20-year-old Kylas Fogbemi and 18-year-old Aliyah Gonzalez. If there's anybody near an Ambo with a white sheet that's available, I'm going to need it. Police now releasing the ages of the 28 surviving victims of Brooklyn's mass shooting. 13 are 18 years or older, 15 are 17 years or younger. There you have it. There you have it. And of course, we're going to hear the regular stuff that we always hear. And I'm not questioning the sincerity or lack thereof of a mayor or a governor. I'm just talking about the futility of words, which is why I started off the show by airing Steve Kerr's exasperation over yet the latest shooting. Here is Mayor Brandon Scott, and this is what he had to say in regards to the shooting that took place last night in Baltimore, Maryland. Listen to this. Someone out there knows, uh, and we want everybody who was out there, somebody knows who did this. I don't care if it's the parents, the brother, the wife, uh, the girlfriend of those who are responsible. We need you to say something. We need you to treat this as if someone had taken the life of your son, your daughter, your father, your brother. We need you to do that and step up and do the right thing. And to those who carried out the, the, the act, we will find you. We will bring you to justice. But again, uh, this brings and highlights not just for Baltimore, but for our country, the need to deal with the flow of illegal guns into our communities, especially from neighborhoods outside of them. Uh, we will continue to be focused on that here in Baltimore, but our country has to be focused on that as well. I appreciate where he's coming from. Again, as a reminder, white folks make up 58.9 percent of the population. Hispanics or Latinos make up 19.1 percent of the population. African-Americans, black folks make up 13.6 percent of the population. Yet white folks and black folks make up 38 percent of the one point nine a piece, by the way, 38 percent a piece. White and black folks make up the one point nine million people in the United States of America who are incarcerated. I got more stats for you before I get into what the mayor had to say. April 26, 2023 report from the Wallet Hub on top five homicide rates per capita by a city in the year 2023, which is now only six months old. Memphis is number one. New Orleans is number two. Baltimore is number three. St. Louis is number four. Detroit is number five. Oh, by the way, um, Memphis. 64.6% black. New Orleans, 58.1% black. Baltimore, 61.6% black. St. Louis is just at 44.8% black. And then, of course, Detroit is at 77.9% black. You see where I'm going? You see where I'm going? They figured it out. They figured it out. Black folks are rendering ourselves an endangered species. We're doing this to each other. Now, I know that's not the popular thing to say. And there are going to be people out there, particularly from the African-American community, that's going to be about the business of, you know what, why you got to go there? Because somebody has to. That's why. I don't give a damn about white America's role to this degree. I understand that from a historic perspective, from a systemic perspective, white America's hands are not clean. I get all of that. We talked about this with the affirmative action rule last week. We understand that. 
But in the end, what it comes down to is this gun control or no gun control. Who the hell's pulling the trigger? And if you're so quick to pull it against one another, how the hell do we possibly have a future? These are our children's lives that are being taken away. Talk about teenagers. Talk about teenagers getting smoked while chilling at a block party. Chilling at a block party. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. And you have to pay attention to the numbers because the numbers are dwindling. And you have to pay attention to the numbers because what's going on in our society. Let me give you another stat because I want you to pay attention. Okay? I want you to pay attention. Because see, when you ain't, because there are black folks dying, but it's a double whammy. Because it's black folks dying at the hands of black people. And when black people are killing you, eventually they're going to get caught. And when they get caught, they're going to contribute to the 1.9 million incarceration rate that presently exists right now. How do I know this for sure? Did you know there's 1,566 state prisons in the country right now? Did you know there's 98 federal prisons in this country right now? Did you know that there's 3,116 local jails right now? Did you know that there's 1,323 juvenile correctional facilities? Who the hell do you think they building it for? Do I have to direct you to the docuseries or the documentary that was 13 on Netflix directed by Ava DuVernay? You want to go look, look it up. You can lament the history of this country and how systemic racism and prejudice and all of this other stuff played a role in how black folks and crimes were, they were criminalized to such a degree because you know what? It was modern day slavery. Slavery, the eradication of it was supposed to take place in 1865. So they had to come up with a different way to throw us in jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. All true. Nothing false about it, but completely irrelevant when it comes to us shooting one another. What that got to do with a black person pulling out a gun and willing to shoot into a crowd filled with minorities, filled with people who look like them, that share their hue, their pigmentation, their cultural identity and everything else in between. What that got to do with it? You going to call it out or not? Because society's coming. Have you been paying attention? Have you been paying attention? Just last week, we sat on this show and we talked about the rulings by the Supreme Court to eradicate race as a consideration from college admissions. People are up in arms about that. And I'm like, you ain't see that coming? You see that coming? You had no idea that was coming. Clarence Thomas didn't hit that last year, didn't flat out state last year that he was coming for that. That the state Supreme Court was coming to address all of those things. Last year it was Roe v. Wade. Women's right to choose, gone. Oh, gun control. We're going to alleviate those concerns. We're going to loosen those gun restrictions. So much so that when you look at states, states by state right now, you're talking about constitutional carry states that means you have the right to carry concealed weapons without even a permit do you know there's now 26 states that have that license all right so you heard the first part of Stephen A. Smith you see his passion about this but Stephen is on point with this one, and that's why I'm playing it. You're hearing it right here on Business in Motion. So we're going to take our last break coming up, and you're getting ready to check out my main girl, Lynn Fidmont, as she's doing a song that's entitled Good Time Party. And we're going to come right back, and we're going to finish out with Stephen A., and I'm going to tell you about next week what to be ready for.